Well, well, turn, 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 I think uh, uh, certainly validated the birds because, at, at, uh, and it validated their producer, Terry Melcher, uh, because I think that it attempted to be inclusionary, hit for a broad audience appeal, humanize and, uh, and shake up with this left-wing, knee-jerk, liberal uh, uh, sensibility. What was that? It was to end the war. It was to uh, uh, to bring uh, uh, mutual respect back into the political process and and, and uh, the racial divide. So it was a tough time. It was violent, and it wasn't the good old days at all. All of the music that came out that I think is quite beautiful, and because it's passionate, and rings true, was. Uh, was developed out of a sense of great chaos, and there was it was a frightening time, really, um, and still a Cold War. All of that looming, and America uh, misstepping. Well, uh, I I hadn't met. Oh, I met. Uh, his name was Jim McGuinn. I met him when he was working with Chad Mitchell and the Chad Mitchell Trio. Uh, earlier, and, I, and I'd met him when he was wearing uh, ma Madras jackets and so forth. Really nifty, preppy, really nifty. Beautiful man, had it down. Penny loafers, man of great distinction. But so I'd known him in another life. Uh, in 19, uh, so David Crosby said in his first uh, book that when he saw me and my, when he and David Lindley were in Santa Barbara and they saw me and my brother play at a, at a, a coffee house. David Crosby turned to David Lindley and he said, if they can get away with it, so can we. And um, I was very happy to be an anecdote in David's illustrious bio. But, so I'd met David. What did, what did uh, everybody bring to it? Well, a mutual regard for living songwriters. I remember Fred Neal was a very important, the guy who wrote, everybody's talking at me, I can't hear a word they're saying, et cetera. Poets. Of the of that folk era, were were highly considered. You, uh, even Phil Oakes, for whom I later uh, produced a record, a protest singer, he was called, uh, wrote some very fine songs. When I remember, Universal Soldier became a hit, a popular hit. Now, kids were dancing to this stuff that basically said, "Enough with the blood and gore. Enough of the war." This was a high degree of protest. And I can warrant for that because I was at a uh, at a demonstration the night uh, Lyndon Johnson decided not to run again for president. Uh, I got one in the with one of these they call Billy clubs here by a cop. Well, I was a very frail boy, and that knocked me down. That's the danger of being with Phil Oaks. They were aiming for us. Everybody who contested the war, or revolted clearly and decisively against the idea, or at the sight of. Uh, uh, racism as it existed in the United States. And so people stuck their neck out. And, and I think that the birds did certainly, they, they went into the area known as bravado. When they did those records, they were a shot well put because they, were, they rang true, they served a social purpose, they did everything a song is supposed to do with those songs.